Hello there, Diane. Hello, Tammy. Hello, Nancy. Good to see you guys. Uh, hello, Mike. Good to see you, sir. Merry Christmas to you as well. Hello, Susan in the UK. Always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Yvonne, good evening to you. All right. Looks like we got plenty of folks jumping on. So um, we will go ahead and see 803. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, hello and welcome. If you don't know what this is, this is episode 169 of my weekly Monday night Facebook Live hangout. I call it my What Am I Doing Facebook Live series, basically because I jump on here once a week just to hang out with you guys, catch up a little bit, and I let you know what I'm up to. Uh, I talk about projects that I'm working on personally, whether that's uh, with the writing or anything, audio, video, any projects that I am currently involved with or touching, I let you guys know about it and give you updates on that. And then uh, I talk about books that I'm reading and enjoying, and then also movies and TV shows that uh, I'm watching as well. So just kind of a casual hangout. Um, if you have any questions, please throw them into the comments. I try to answer them if I can see them. And um, say hello to everybody. Um, hello, Emily. Good to see you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, yeah, Mike, 169. It is kind of crazy to think that we've been doing this um, for that long, but it's a lot of fun. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So with that being said, though, this will be, uh, I, don't, I guess this isn't time for a drum roll. Uh, this will be the last Facebook Live that I will be doing uh, on Monday nights for 2021. Um Next Monday after Christmas, I have some family stuff that I will be doing, so I'm not going to be jumping on then. So the next time that we meet, uh, it's going to be 2022. So actually, good gosh, when is uh, New Year's? I hope it's not that Monday. I might be missing two in a row. Let's see. No. Okay. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah. So the next time we do a Monday Night Live will be January 3rd. We will be fresh into the new year. So that is... Uh, both kind of exciting and also a little bit sad to think that the whole year has gone by, but got a lot of really fun and exciting stuff planned for 2022, which I'll be telling you guys about um, shortly. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, first topic, what am I reading? I'm going to pull my notes up real quick because I always tend to forget something. Um, so <clears throat> I did finish reading the third book in Andrew Maine's The Naturalist series, uh, by the way, all those books are in Kindle Unlimited, and the audiobook is included as well. So I, I love when they do that, kind of get an a extra bang for your buck. Um, I mentioned in my Patreon newsletter that I wasn't sure that I was going to – my initial plan was I was going to read all four books in this series all in a row because I was enjoying them, and they were all available. And I thought, hey, why not? And then I got about halfway through the third one, and I kind of started to lose interest a little bit. Um, but then the end of book three actually ended in a cliffhanger. It was kind of the only book in the series that had, had a bit of an open ending. So I decided, you know, or I kind of had to redecide whether I was going to continue or not. And I might have jumped into book four, except, um, a brand new book by one of my favorite horror authors named Anya Allborn, A-N-I-A, um, A-H-L-B-O-R-N, uh, just came out like two weeks ago and I wanted to grab it and I saw that it was in Kindle Unlimited. So I got really excited and I said, okay, I'm going to read this. I need, I need to take a break from the naturalist series. Um, and I'm probably going to make it an extended break. I'm not going to jump into book four, um, right away. I'll probably read a few books in between, but I did enjoy what I have read of that series. They're very easy reads. They're very fast paced. I think he's very clever with the way he kind of blends some science, um, into his, you know, more thriller type writing. It's it's pretty cool. And I love that they're in Kindle Unlimited. I'm a big fan of, of that service. It's actually a service, I've said this before, so I'm kind of repeating myself if you've been watching me for a while, but uh, all of my books are in Kindle Unlimited, but I've never actually been a Kindle Unlimited customer until about the last three or four months. I signed up initially when it first released to kind of test it out. And then I just never renewed it, but uh, I've kind of gotten back into it. I've enjoyed a lot of Dean Koontz's stuff that they have on there now because he is um, kind of signed under one of Amazon's imprints for a lot of his newer stuff. So it's been a really good um, 
economical deal because 10 bucks a month, actually, I think I signed up for five bucks a month for a few months and you get a lot of really good books that you can read. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, um, Anya Allborn's new book is also in Kindle Unlimited. It's called Dark Across the Bay. And that is what I'm reading right now. And I got to say, like, the characters are really interesting. I'm enjoying the family dynamic. The setting is, you know, typical, creepy for what you would expect for this type of novel. You know, this massive coastal mansion in Maine. Um, I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm only about 20, maybe 25% through it, but um, definitely really enjoying it. If you've not read any of Anya Alborn's work, go check it out. She's a horror author that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. Uh, within her walls is a great, within these walls, excuse me, is a great book. Um, the Devil Crept In, Brother. She's got several out there. Um, go check her out. But the latest one is called Dark Across the Bay. And so far, so good. So that is what I am reading. And oh, by the way, this is not anything I'm reading now. And I can't read it until next July. But Blake Crouch, who is another author that um, some of you may know, I'm a really big fan of. His new book just got announced, I think today, actually. It's called Upgrade, and it's coming out in July of 2022. So got a ways to go, but if you're the type of person that likes to pre-order books ahead of time so you don't forget their release date, um, yeah, it's called Upgrade by Blake Crouch coming out next summer. I'm really excited for that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's go ahead, and let me jump on through comments real quick here. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into what I've been watching. So... Where do I want to start with this? Uh, we'll start with TV. So, oh, this is this is actually kind of funny. I, ma I made note of this in my, my Patreon newsletter today. For some reason, I have been calling, I've been mispronouncing. It's not even mispronouncing. I've just been saying the wrong freaking name. I have been calling Yellowstone, the, the TV show Yellowstone, Yosemite for like two weeks and nobody has called me out on it. Nobody in the comments has said anything. Why haven't you guys told me that I'm sounding like an idiot and I've been calling Yellowstone Yosemite for literally like two weeks. Um, I don't know, but I, I just happened to realize that when I was watching back last week's video that I recorded and I was like, Oh my God, I'm just, that's not the right name. And then I saw that I actually mistyped it in some, you know, stuff I've been posting on Facebook and another newsletter I sent out to Patreon. I'm just like, my gosh, people probably think I'm an idiot or they're going off and they're looking for some show called Yosemite that doesn't exist. Uh, but yes, the show is called Yellowstone. And I know that all of you guys know this. I'm the only doofus around here that's been calling the damn thing Yosemite. But anyway, uh, I'm late to the game with that show. My wife and I have been wanting to watch it. And I think they're like in season four now. We're only like five episodes into season one, but I really do enjoy it um, quite a bit. And I'm excited to see where it goes. I love the characters. I just love how they're each unique in their own right. Um, I think they're a little over the top, all of them. I think they can kind of bleed into like caricature, but in, you know, drama like this in fiction, I'm perfectly okay with that for the type of show that it is. It just adds to the drama. Um, and I really, really am enjoying it. Um, we'll see if it keeps me like fully invested for, you know, four seasons worth. But right now, it's it's been a lot of fun, and everybody that I talk to that that I'm friends with, you know, they they all that, that have seen it, they really like it. So, um, hello, Diane from Texas, good to see you. Um, let's see, hello, Adrian, good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Um, so yeah, have, we're still watching Yellowstone slowly but surely, and then the season finale of Succession. I mentioned it came out not yesterday, but the Sunday before. And I mentioned last week, we hadn't had a chance to watch it yet. Well, we watched it. Amazing. Um, if you're a fan of that show, I think the season three finale was one of the best episodes. And I think that, you know, all the performances are phenomenal in that show, but I think that Kieran Culkin's performance in this episode, specifically like the last 15 minutes was just amazing and award worthy in its own right. There was moments near the end. I'm not spoiling anything. Um, where you, I really felt he was genuinely terrified of Logan. Like he, he just, it was so convincing. So I was really pleased with that finale, but also really upset because now we have to wait for season four. But anyway, it's, it was really good. And moving into movies that I've been enjoying. Okay. So this is one that's a little, I think controversial, maybe. Um, I watched, well, my wife and I watched the power of the dog 
on Netflix just a couple days ago. And if you've not heard of this film, this movie um, has been basically praised all year long. I don't, I don't remember specifically when it came out, but I feel like I've been hearing about it forever with all this critical acclaim and praise and how it's going to be the front runner for several different Oscar categories. And it's got Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons and, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on her name. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's the significant other of Jesse Plemons in real life. Um, and she was the Mary Jane and the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I can't think of her name. I'm such a freaking doofus tonight. Um, you would know her anyway. She is in it, and it's a movie that I went into with such high expectations because everything about it just made me think this movie is going to be amazing. It's going to be just a hard hitting, you know, beautifully filmed drama. Everything looked great. All the praise was hyped, hyping it up. I watched it, and I, I'm a little bit of a movie. I'm not going to say I'm a movie like buff, but like I'm definitely a, a film enthusiast. I like all genres. I like all different types of movies. I've I've just I've been invested in filmmaking as kind of like my side side hobby basically my entire life. And this movie completely fell flat for me. I, I watched it and I, when it was over, I, I was just stunned that I had just watched the film that so many people have been saying is so amazing. And I'm all a fan of a slow burn movie. I'm all a fan of open end. I'm a big fan of open endings. Like I, I can tolerate a lot of stuff that your like average viewer or average reader doesn't really care for. And this movie just didn't do it for me. I felt like when it was over, um, I should have been feeling something and I felt absolutely nothing. It was such a strange letdown, but Yes, my, Mike, I knew you were going to get the answer for me. Kirsten Dunst is is the woman that's in this uh, film. Anyway, I, it was just such a letdown. And the performances were fantastic. I mean, Cumberbatch did a great... All of the acting was phenomenal. Cinematography, directing, phenomenal. Beautiful movie. Plot, story, impact. It It just completely missed me. And maybe, I don't know what about my interpretation of the movie was, was different. But yeah, it just didn't do it for me. Um, but... Enough said about that. It is on Netflix, so you can watch it, you know, for free with your Netflix subscription. And uh, it's supposed to maybe potentially get nominated and win a lot of Oscars this year, but we'll see. Did not do it for me. Probably the first movie that I have seen in the last several years that people were, you know, hyping up to win lots of Oscars that I have watched and legitimately thought, I, I just don't get the hype. I don't I don't get this at all. I, I did not enjoy it. Anyway, um, what's next on the watching? Oh, so in a little more of a fun note, I, I think I've mentioned to you guys before, I have been trying to watch Christmas-themed horror movies this year, and I have kept up that tradition again this week. I watched a film called uh, Better Watch Out. It was on Shudder, and this is a movie that came out like three or four years ago, and it's basically um, like Home Alone meets... Uh, the strangers meets American pie to a certain degree uh, about it's about a uh, like a preteen boy and his friend and there's a babysitter that comes over it's Christmas season so of course you got the tree up the lights the decorations the Christmas music is playing through the whole movie um, and it's like a home invasion kind of thing and they're fighting the you know the the, the intruders it's really interesting it, I enjoyed it and I'll tell you why the trailer for this movie, uh, made it look like a straight up home invasion Christmas theme movie, which was, you know, it was a, with a comedic twist. I was excited to watch it. They did a freaking amazing job of misdirection because the trailer shows you so many scenes. And then when you watch the film, you realize that the actual implications of what is happening and the true meaning of what's behind the events is completely different than what it was or what you were thinking going into it. That's all I'm going to say. It was a brilliant job of misdirection in the trailer. Um, but the film is a lot of fun. If you just want like a mindless kind of, you know, Christmas theme, just fun action suspense movie, um, better watch out. It's on shutter. It was pretty cool. Um, hello, Tammy. Good to see you. Uh, hello, Lisa. Good evening. Uh, let's see. Hello, Cindy Rhodes from Pennsylvania. Good to see you. Diane, your husband and you watch Yellowstone too. We love it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really enjoying Yellowstone. 
Um, I've not seen this other show called Yosemite that some idiot on Facebook keeps talking about. But anyway, uh, what else have we got going on? Oh, and I did I did put a link. I've posted this link before, I'm pretty sure, somewhere on my social media. But uh, as we're getting closer, I'm just getting really excited. The new Scream movie, which is technically the fifth Scream, is coming out in less than a month. So I'm really excited about that. However, I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait to watch it because I'm not going to a movie theater. I, and it has not, well, it has a little bit to do with what's going on in the world, but I have just been very anti movie theater for a while because I've just not enjoyed the experiences at theaters. Um, even before, you know, everything started happening. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to be a very short release window before they put it out, like on premium rental on demand on iTunes or something. But I'm very excited. Scream is probably my, second favorite horror franchise behind Halloween. And I say that, and it's also kind of with an asterisk because I feel like scream was the Halloween of my generation. The very first scream came out when I think I was in seventh grade. So like that, I was like right at that age where like it was all just hitting. And, um, it's that franchise has always been kind of like special to me. And I, I've loved basically all of them i think the third one is the weakest in the franchise but one two and four i think are just freaking fantastic um awesome slasher films but anyway uh so i'm really excited for that if you didn't know it was coming oh it's coming but that is it in terms of what i'm watching and then in terms of what i am working on i am currently writing the second book in my shifty pi series i don't have a title or a cover or anything like that yet. Um, I will be hopefully getting that put together um, in January. I'll be sharing it over on uh, Patreon, everybody over there first, and then I'll be making a, a wide release and announcement um, later. But um, I am really excited with this book. It's been a lot of fun to get back with Alexa. I know I said that last week, but having you know another week of writing under my belt with this story, um, she's just a lot of fun to write. And, uh, I don't know how far along I am in the book overall, cause I'm not quite sure how long it's going to be, but the beginning so far, I think has been, um, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you guys. I think you're going to like the direction it's going to take and the new trouble she finds herself in. And it's just fun to get back with like a badass character. So anyway, um, that is really it for what I'm working on in terms of writing, and then in terms of like other projects, uh, I do have a, a bit of a roadmap I'm working on for 2022. I have a lot of uh, video stuff that I am planning um, over on YouTube. Some of that is more like writing business and creative mindset um, stuff. So if you're interested at all in like the business side of my writing or my creative process and how that's working, be sure and check out my YouTube channel. Um, and then I also have a lot of exciting stuff that I'm going to be dropping over on Patreon, probably starting in January. I'm just kind of waiting for the new year to hit, um, to start rolling out some of this stuff. Um, some of the behind the scenes stuff that, that I post over there and some new videos as well. Um, and I will say this, I can't remember if I said this last week or not. I, I don't think I did. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I think that the first sentence of Shifty PI book two is maybe my favorite first sentence of any book that I have ever written. Um, and that's all I'm going to say, uh, on that, but, Oh, also, by the way, thank you to, um, all the new Patreon subscribers. I did get a few new ones last week. So welcome. I hope you, uh, like the content that I'm posting over there and that little bit of that kind of behind the scenes, more intimate, uh, look at what I'm working on. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate all of your guys's support. 100%. Um, it means a lot to me that you guys are willing to, um, toss me a few dollars every, every month to, uh, see more of what I'm working on. So I really appreciate it. And I hope you like the content that you get over there and some of the perks. And again, I, I do have some more stuff planned, um, coming up next year, especially as that platform continues to grow. So anyway, um, hello, Linda. Merry Christmas to you. It's perfectly fine that you're late. I've just been rambling as usual. But uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I've been going for about 20 minutes, and that's usually uh, where I try to cut it off to keep from taking up any more of your evening. But I do want to say that since this is the last one of the year um, until we um, cross over New Year's for 2022, um, 
from the bottom of my heart, you know, thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for reading my books, for reviewing my books, for coming and hanging out with me on Monday nights while I just talk about random stuff that I'm doing and mispronounced television show titles. Um, all the likes, all the shares, all the comments, just everything that you guys have done, you know, it means the world to me. Um, and the encouragement and the inspiration from you guys and, and the feedback that I get from you is why I continue to do this and why I am able to make a living doing this. So thank you very much. I hope all of you have a wonderful holiday and you get to spend some time with the people you love and hopefully all things considered, we'll be back in 2022, January 3rd for the next one and we'll start a whole nother year. So thanks a lot. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and your week. Bye.